Hello, and welcome to this week's Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today I want to share some thoughts on a new statement from the American Heart Association that may have you rethinking what time you sit down to dinner. Dreaming of a beach vacation? Get away to the sugar white sands and turquoise waters of Panama City Beach, Florida. You'll discover endless family fun, heart-pounding thrills, eco-adventure, and romance. So make it memorable and make it yours at Panama City Beach, the real fun beach. Plan your escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Last month, the American Heart Association released a new scientific statement that seemed to suggest that eating later in the day is bad for your heart. At least that was the take-home message that made the rounds on the evening news and the morning shows. The actual statement was a bit more cautious. It said, quote, allocating more calories earlier in the day might help reduce cardiovascular disease risk, end quote. But then that was immediately followed by the following disclaimer, quote, large studies tracking patients' cardiovascular health over a long period are needed to show how meal timing and patterns impact disease risk, end quote. In other words, this is still very much an unanswered question. Now, if you are someone who finishes dinner by 6 p.m. every night and does not eat again until breakfast, I bet you're feeling pretty smug right now. Then again, you belong to a pretty small tribe. Most American households, including mine, eat dinner after 6 p.m., and their European counterparts tend to eat even later. Not only that, but about half of adults, including this one, admit to snacking between dinner and bedtime. So the question is, do we need to change our behavior in response to this latest research? Now, the first thing to understand is that this latest statement did not come out in response to a new study. Rather, the authors were looking back at studies that have already been done on different aspects of meal timing and meal frequency to see if they could draw any firm conclusions. And they really couldn't, hence the disclaimer. There were studies that found an association between late eating patterns and various cardiovascular risk factors. But as the authors are careful to point out, Correlation isn't necessarily causation. Just because two things happen together does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. The few studies that actually tested the impact of different meal timing on risk factors tended to be small and short in duration, not the kind of thing you can really hang your hat on. Having read the entire review paper, and by the way, I've included a link to it in the show notes if you'd like to take a look yourself, my takeaway is a little different than what you may have seen on the evening news. Today's episode is supported by Zevo Insect Sprays. No one wants bugs in their home, but using bug killers with harsh chemicals isn't ideal either. And that's where Zevo Insect Sprays come in. Zevo's powerful bioselective technology kills bugs by targeting their biology and their behavior. In Zevo sprays, the ingredients target a special nerve receptor active in bugs, but not in people and pets. So it's safe to use around your loved ones when used as directed. Zevo sprays work on a broad range of crawling, flying, and stinging insects like ants, roaches, and fruit flies. Instead of insecticide chemicals like imiprothrin or cypermethrin, Zevo sprays are made with essential oils and other familiar ingredients. Now that's something you can feel good about bringing home. Visit zevoinsect.com slash diva for 10% off your first order of Zevo insect killer sprays or flying insect traps. That's Z-E-V-O insect.com slash diva. Today's episode was also supported by Honest Tea. Honest Tea is a brand that doesn't only make delicious organic teas and beverages, they also make a difference around the world. For every fair trade certified product Honest sells, they give back a premium to a community development fund located at the ingredient's origin. And then the farmers decide together how to spend their funds to improve their lives. These funds go toward vital resources like clean water, schools, healthcare, and transportation. And that's why the small choice of what to drink when you're thirsty can mean a lot to a lot of people. 
I've always enjoyed honest tea beverages, but I never knew that aside from just making great products, they're also doing good things in the world. I'm really glad to support a company that gives back to the communities that need help the most. Visit honesttea.com slash podcast to learn more about Honest and how your small decision can have a very big impact. And now back to today's burning question, does when you eat matter? Our bodies do have daily or circadian rhythms that affect our digestion, metabolism, and hormonal systems. So it's really not a stretch to think that the timing of your meals would affect your body's response to food. However, I still think that what and how much you eat matters more than when you eat it. As the authors of the paper point out, simply being more intentional about your meals and making some sort of plan for them is likely to improve the nutritional quality of your diet, and that may be the real factor here. So before you change the timing of your meals, consider whether that's likely to have a positive or negative impact on the quality of those meals. If the only way that you're going to be able to eat dinner by 6 p.m. is by stopping at the drive-thru for fast food on the way home from work, I don't think that's worth it. If, by contrast, eating dinner at 8 p.m. means that you have time to prepare a nice meal at home and eat it in a relaxed setting, I think the benefits outweigh any potential metabolic risks. By the same token, though, if late-night eating is causing you to eat more calories than you need, the risk of unwanted weight gain may actually be what's dangerous for your heart, more so than the timing of your food intake. Another thing to consider is how your current eating pattern is working for you. If you are at a healthy body weight or you're moving in the right direction and your blood sugar and your blood pressure and all that are fine and you're feeling good and sleeping okay and you sense that the nutritional quality of your diet is on track, why mess with success? If, on the other hand, you're struggling with any of those issues, you might experiment with your meal timing to see if a different pattern gives you better results. If you tend to snack right up until bedtime, try instituting a ceasefire, or maybe we should call it a a cease fork, at 8 p.m., or maybe just limit your post-dinner snacking to fresh fruit. If you currently eat a heavy meal at the end of the day, you could try eating a larger meal in the middle of the day and making that evening meal a lighter one. Or see how eating a bigger breakfast or one that's higher in protein, affects your hunger and your food choices throughout the rest of the day. My point here is there's no one-size-fits-all formula. Yes, you do want to find an eating pattern that's going to work with your biological rhythms, but in my view, it's equally important to find an eating pattern that works with your daily routines, because that's the one that's going to make it easier for you to make healthy choices on a consistent basis. Do you need some help figuring out how the latest nutrition headlines might apply to you and your family? I'm here to help. You can email your nutrition questions to nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com or post them on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.